Welcome back to yet another video. Uh, hopefully gonna be a quick one today. We're talking about cinema cameras and why they exist. Uh, we're professional photographers, professional filmmakers. We use cameras to make money. You have the R5? Yes. You have the R6? Yep. I have the R5, I have an R6. You have just acquired yourself yes. a C70. Uh, can, you, can you care to explain? Why? Why? Because you have a nice camera, the R5, the R6, so great camera. Yeah. So you record 4K, 10-bit, 422 color still. So it's like, why would you need need a cinema camera in this kind of world where mirrorless cameras are getting super, super amazing and just phenomenal? So basically, like the R5, fantastic camera. Um, brilliant for video and I use it a lot for photo. Obviously now that I have this, I use it more for photo than I do for video. Um, but I started finding that there was some like little things where it's like, because it's not specifically optimized for video. It's a hybrid camera. It's a, it's a hybrid, right? Um, so there was a few things here and there that were like a little bit annoying and like to make it the most effective, you sort of have to rig it up. And I mean, we've ended up rigging this one up as well. But like the R5, inside the cage, it would wiggle. Um, but oh, the cage good, was sort of necessary to have a monitor and you need like NDs on the front, uh, which for me, the NDs that I was using and I've heard some other people online talking about this, uh, they give a bit of a green hue in the highlights and reflections. <laughs> a little, yeah. A, li a, little a little bit. Little. And it's like really frustrating for color grading because yeah. it's like, you can't take like, well, at least with the level of skill that I have, I can't just take that out because it's like yeah. that's like it's like, on there's reflections on people's hair yeah. it's, it's like, like it's, in glasses even like there's just little things like that yeah. and it's like really frustrating it's doable but it's like um, is it work going to be worth the effort in the final exactly production? right yeah um and the other thing was like i was i've started to be working on like bigger projects and like more live stuff so to be able to have something like this that once again, compared to the R5, I know that some other mirrorless cameras out there have unlimited recording. Yeah. Um, but compared to the R5 and <laughs> the, the Canon, the Canon, <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> like the Canon ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, this is like unlimited recording. It's got multiple audio inputs. It's got like you can have. Uh, constant like video output mm -hmm. so that you can use it for live streams and yeah. things like that. It's got time code. It's got internal NDs which is incredible. Um, it's got really nice compression in audio um, and like good monitors, like little dials so that you can do that. It's, it's a video camera. It's like, it's cause it's yeah. specifically designed yeah. for that. There's just so many little things that like, especially coming from like a mirrorless camera, yeah. you don't realize that you're missing them until you have them, if yeah. that makes sense. So like even yeah, pressing yeah. record, there's a little record light here. Tally I, don't know. Light. I don't know if you can see that. You got the tally light and there's another one here and it shows you which card it's recording yeah. to. Yeah. Like, so things like that where it's just easy to use. Yeah, um, it makes it yeah, more of a, it's a better experience. Yeah, yeah. While filming, you're not uh, busy thinking, oh, did I hit record? Yeah, uh, no, it's like, I, you could just look at it and see. Yeah, I can see it. There's a giant red tally light. Oh, it's a small red tally light. On this no, side. it's... But on the, the other front, one's pretty big. Oh, I've covered it up with the cables. Oh, well. Uh, that's, uh, that that's, that defeats the purpose of that, but... I'll have to sell it. Yeah, get um, rid of it. Go back to the R5. <laughs> yeah, but like... I don't know, it's it's been like a massive change and like even some of the things that I'm still learning about how to use it has been useful as I'm going, if yeah. that, that doesn't make yeah. any no, sense. No, no, it makes it plenty of sense. You learn as you go, like, you learn on But like custom job. buttons, dynamic range. The dynamic that, range. That is it? what, 16 plus stops of yeah. dynamic range? That's insane. At C-Log 2 is, nobody, nobody needs that. It's just the highlights are always there. Like well, you've, <laughs> they're, they're never gone. It's I mean, if have. you expose all right. Yeah, no, that's that's insane, right? Yeah. Like, and dual gain output sensor. Yep, dual gain once output Once again, sensor. this is, I feel like I'm doing an ad here, but <laughs> the dual gain output this sensor is, means that- This is that, not sponsored, just like, I wanna make that yeah, clear. Yeah. It's actually sponsored <laughs> by Rode. No, that's not true at all. Yeah, no, so the dual gain output sensor low, means- Low noise. Means oh, that it's low noise, whatever level you're doing yeah. it at, rather than just at the native ISOs. Yeah. Obviously, at 800 it's native ISO so yeah. it is a lot nicer it's cleaner yeah um, but, you know you can push it probably push it to like 6400 ISO yeah and it's still and still have a very still clean very tidy um, whereas compared to like 
you got a mirrorless camera. Yeah, the R5 was struggling. It, it does struggle quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I put the R5 now on like 1600 ISO. I'm like, yeah. is that too much? Should I try? Yeah. Should we add a light? But I'm like, no, no, it's fine. It's just for YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, those sort of things matter, having the cleaner image output, yeah. um, not having to worry about screwing on an ND filter because typically yeah. as photographers- And you can just like swap lenses straight away and it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, you can like, just straight off and- mm -hmm. The ND is still there because it yeah. sits behind the lens now. It doesn't sit in front of the lens. And mm -hmm. um, that's a small thing for me, um, especially now that I'm, when I shoot, like if I shoot dual carry, I have two ND filters yeah. and I can just have like my 69 stop on my prime lens, which is going to be super, yeah, yeah, you know, okay. lets in a lot of light. I'm like, all right, six, 69 stops. But then if I want to not have any ND at all, I have to now, okay, well, I'm now going to take the filter off, uh, either find the filter pouch. If you've got the Polar Pro ones, they come with like a hard case chuck that in back pocket but that's yeah. still like another step that's another thing while to do. on the c70 and other cinema cameras it's just a button it's it's just it's that easy though yeah. like you just click the button and it's you've got more nd and i mean cool like cool from a professional standpoint i've never used it in my own work um i can see in the future though that i would be using it is raw mm. um raw and pain, like yeah. good raw yeah <laughs> good raw that's easy to use yeah. like 8K RAW in the R5 is a great gimmick. Um, I don't know of anyone who's actually used 8K RAW it's as like in a in a production or a real shoot even, even on the on, R5. Even on like an R5C where the fans are to cool it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's a, another yeah. thing, overheating. This has got cooling. It's got a built-in fan. It's got a built-in fan. Yeah. Like all these things that like, while you're using it, you don't notice, but it just yeah. works. Yeah, it's the small things that annoy you when shooting on like a hybrid system that make you think I need a solution to this. So what do, what do people do? Well, some people have, I think there's like fan attachments you can like- Yeah, you can get R5. ones that like stick on and the back. Stick on the back, that, okay, well, you don't need to get that attachment because it comes with like- Yeah, but if, you, but if you're using a battery grip, then like you might not be able that to, like you might overheat either, yeah. quicker, yeah, true. things like that. Um, I don't know if I mentioned multiple audio inputs. So there's yeah. two mini XLRs mini XLR. and the mic. So you can record uh, channel one can be two tracks, channel two can be two tracks. Um, so at the moment, for what I do for most of it is just a shotgun at two tracks, and then the other track is just ambient, and the mm. microphone in the camera is actually oh, yeah? quite nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, noticed, I, really I did like notice it. when I was playing with it, it was um, recording the microphone audio, and had like a separate track for yes. the internal so mic. So when you import, there'll be four tracks. So in theory, if for some reason the microphone's got damaged or screwed up or it's, it's busted and mm -hmm. you didn't notice it, um, you have a safety channel at the very least with the yeah. microphones built in, yeah. which is just nice to have. Because once you plug a microphone into an R5, a mirrorless that's camera, it. That's, that's it. This audio is screwed. I mean, I'm recording. And it's, and it's only screen. the one input, unless you put like a splitter, Yeah. which I don't know how well that works. I've never played around never with that. I've never used a splitter either. Yeah, I'd be I nervous. <laughs> I, from how I understand it, is that it splits it to the left and right channel. Yeah, okay. So in post, you have to make it mono, mm -hmm. which is just another step in post. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good thing to have a separate track, again, safety, but I've never used it, never needed this need, uh, need seen the need for one. Yeah. I've just, yeah, <laughs> I just, you know, get my audio right the yeah. first time, but yeah, it's cool. Or that use you, multiple cameras. You've got, you've got the safety, <laughs> it's so nice. Big thing, uh, you know, not maybe not in the, out the comments, but a big thing about this is that it's not a full frame sensor. I have a full yes. frame sensor. Yep, that what is, is this? This one's a Super Thirty Five. So yeah. it's it comes with like a shooting from shooting on full frame to shooting on Super Thirty Five. It feels like there's a couple of different drawbacks, but it's also got some advantages as well because it's Super Thirty Five. That's sort of like been a standard for film in the yeah. past, yeah. which means that you now have access to a whole load of like pretty vintage Cinema. lenses, yeah. right? So you can adapt PL lenses onto this yeah. if you if you really want. Um, but it's native RF mount. Yes, yeah. but it is native RF mount. And you can so get you, a speed booster. You can get a speed booster. So that's a solution that I've had and Canon does like a, a pretty good speed booster. I like it, I haven't mm. had any issues with it. Mm. Um, I've heard that if you point it directly at a light source, it has a green circle in the middle, but I feel like that's the least of your worries yeah. if you're pointing it directly Don't at a light directly source. <laughs> point it at light source. Because if it's not, if it's if it's off center, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you've got a speed booster to adapt your native like full frame lenses yep. onto it, 
and I've not had a problem. It's been mm. super fast autofocus, um, stabilization has been there. I don't know, it's, it's, it's a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit cropped. So if you put this one on, uh, for instance, like the 24 to 70, the 24 is gonna look a little bit more like a 35 mil, and then the 70 is gonna look more like a 105, I think, is that, is that how it works? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it's, I, that's how it's I like remember. It's like 1.6 crop That's how factor. I remember it, because it's just 24 to 35, Yeah. and then 72, well, it would be 105, mm. Um, and then 100, 105 becomes like 150. Is mm -hmm. it 1.5 or 1.6? I think oh, it's like... Because APS-C is 1.6, like APS, APS yeah. but this is yeah. super 35, so... I don't know. It's, we don't it's, know what it's we're talking there about. about but it's thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost an APS-C like, crop <laughs> sensor. Um, but the speed booster also gives you an extra stop of light, I which is nice. I did notice that. Which I, is also... I don't know how that works. Because um, surely the lens would be giving you the same amount of light. Yeah, because it's it's weird because it's not a T stop, it's an F stop. It's what the, yeah. it's what the um, lens is seeing. It's super weird. I don't yeah, I don't understand it either. But I put a one point four. I put a one point four <laughs> lens on and I scrolled back the aperture yeah. and I was like, hey, you're at F one. I'm like, did I break it? I think I broke it. This is not an F one lens. And then mm -hmm. I remembered, oh, the speed booster. It will be yeah, it makes letting you more light. I'm like, yeah. And I was using it down here in complete darkness. Mm. And I could see, I was like, oh, this is still 800 ISO. I haven't changed yeah, anything. Yeah. It's just all the lens. Yeah. Which is insane. But It's very nice. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't, to be honest, I don't really know what else That's to it. say. It's just, it's a good package. It's like, a really good package. It's a little, it's obviously bigger. It's, it's a lot it's, bigger. It's quite a lot. Should we grab an R5? Yeah, let's quickly yeah, go grab an R5. Oh, you've got R5. We'll I mean, it's, it's all rigged up, so it's the, uh, a different comparison, but... Yeah. The, the body is about one and a half times bigger, I would say I'd vertically, say. and then about same on the side. And it's like double as deep. So it's it's quite a lot different. There you go. Quite, quite, yeah, quite a big difference. Again, what's great about like a mirrorless camera is the versatility. This can go into a backpack. You can pull it out. And again, we have like 4K, 6K, 6K? No, 8K C-Log in these cameras now, which, you yeah. know, I'm not going to say it puts them on par with cinema cameras, but you could comfortably use this as an A cam, yeah. and then comfortably use this as your B cam. Marry the footage up in post, and you, you've got pretty good, I mean, C-Log 2 versus C-Log 3, a little bit difference in dynamic range, but you've got like the same, you know, by the same brand, cinema camera, same brand, mirrorless camera, you've got the same like color science that has gone into both yeah. sensors. Yeah, so they, they do match and the, quite well. If you use the same like, you know, kind of lenses, you're matching the lenses up that way, and mm -hmm. you, you could comfortably use something like this as a B cam, as an A cam too. But yeah, if this <laughs> well is now the, now this one's around. This yeah. is the A cam. A cam. I know some people that do use this as a B cam, and then like a C two hundred. No, C three hundred Mark two or oh, a C five hundred something rather Mark two. I don't know. I'm not in the market. <laughs> <laughs> We're nerds, but not that big. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Super cool. Um, something I don't like about the C70, and this is how you know it's not an ad. Dual SD. What? Why? You don't like dual I SD? Would have, I would have just loved dual CF Express. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I feel, would yeah. have preferred dual. CF Express would have been CF really Express. nice. Oh, again, I would have taken one CF Express at this point. Um, mm. and then, again, still a V90 card, but I don't know. It's, I, it's probably because of size. They probably couldn't fit it yeah. in. Yeah. I feel like because they've chopped it. It is. Very, it is. It's. It's quite. Like it's just like on it's the right side there. Yeah, you've got um, card slots here. So I can, I think, I think it is probably a space saver. Yeah, probably. But yeah, I feel, I feel you. That's I thought, I thought you just meant like dual cards. I was oh like, no, no, that's dual like, cards is great. That's pretty good. Dual cards is amazing, but the fact that that SD, I was like, oh, yeah, I would it's like um, CC of Express. It means here. yeah, now you've got more expensive options. <sighs> SD cards, but yeah, you know, CF Express cards are already expensive. Right, um, thanks for talking about the C70. Um, hope you guys no learned worries. something about why you would buy something like this, a cinema camera over a mirrorless camera. If you're doing both photos and video and you need like the versatility of having both options, sure, go with a mirrorless camera that has great photos, great video options. But if you're finding yourself doing more video stuff and you want to like, maybe not have to buy ND filters because they yeah. can be very expensive, yeah. especially if you get them on every single And end. there's so many different options so many to different try options and they all have their own little quirks yeah. and things. Like, 
I don't know, maybe you buy one and it doesn't have like physical stops yeah. and then it's got little spots in yeah. certain areas. Yeah. Or maybe like, you're getting a ton of vignetting on another yep. available ND. Yep. You have a cinema camera, you know you're getting the professional multiple audio inputs, you're getting an unlimited record time on this, you're getting a fan to make sure that the thing doesn't melt Overheat. inside. Yep. You're getting just all of these little things that add up for a cinema, a filmmaker, uh, that you're not gonna get on a mirrorless camera. And so on that note, you wanna you wanna go get some like I, I know, gotta get a coffee or get something. Yeah, actually, I could use a coffee. I've got a shoot in an hour, so. So yeah, we'll go get you a coffee. Let's go. And uh, guys, hit like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. This is gonna be really reckless. I'm so sorry. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, no, I was no, so yeah. missed. Do it again. I you have to do it again. Watch me just knock over the TV. <laughs> no, you won't knock over the TV. Oh, you gotta do it again. <laughs> you gotta. So hit that like button and subscribe to Hardware. Do, do people say subscribe first? I am not a good YouTuber. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, if, if your throwing ability is anything to do with your oh. YouTube. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, guys. Uh, oh, you got it. Oh. You got it. <laughs> there we go. We'll just cut it there. Yeah. Uh, damn, now that, now that you've put me on the spot, now I have to... <laughs> I was literally like, before, before we started filming, yeah. I was like, I was yeah. listing off all yeah. these reasons. Um, he had it, he had it good to go, now yeah. on the spot, hey, well, in an interview. <laughs> yeah. Um,